Maybe some of you taught your children to sing the little phrase, oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10 Minute Tour, day five of the tour portion, Bashalak, when he sent, and we are in Exodus or Shemot chapter 16. And I found this an interesting verse. It says in verse 9, And Moshe said to Aaron, Say to all the congregation of the children of Israel, Notice the wording here, Come near before Yahweh. Well, you would think that following after that, all you who worship him, all you who adore him, all you who are singing and dancing of his name, that's not what it says. Come near before Yahweh, for he has heard your (laughs) grumblings. I don't know that I would ever advise anyone to use the methodology or tactic of mumbling and grumbling to get Yah's attention, and then he grant you an audience, a personal audience, to come near to me, him. Come here, you little darlings. I understand that you're grumbling. I just want to love on you. Well, that's not exactly what happened here. The context of this is that Israel has left the oasis called Elim. And there they had found 12 fountains of water and 70 palm trees. And they camped out, and it was just wonderful. But that's not the promised land. That's not where they were called to. So they continued their journey, and they come out into a place where they start mumbling and grumbling about the lack of food. They just fussed and complained about water. Now it's food. And they said in verse number three, for you brought us out into this wilderness to put all of this assembly to death with hunger. We haven't seen a McDonald's or a Burger King anywhere around. There's not even a 7-Eleven to buy a hot dog. I mean, what are we supposed to eat out here? Moshe says, Yah will provide for you bread and meat. You're going to be okay. Matter of fact, he said, you're going to see the esteem, the glory that you cannot, Yahweh, reveal to you in this situation. And so Yah has a plan of bringing in quail for their meat supply. And he is about to reveal to them the miracle of manna. Manna is just this little wafer-like seed that shows up on the ground, and they can just scoop it up and shove it into their mouth. It's good and clean food, and it will nourish the body. It will give them substance. It will take away their hunger pains and give them the energy and the health that they're looking for. They can store it up a bit and make maybe a manna meal out of it and make a big voluminous piece of bread. Maybe they want to make uh, soup out of it or, you know, just they're going to be creative with it. God's going to give it to them six days a week. And then he will give them a supernatural increase of it for the seventh day so that they can get a double portion. The only provision is you're not to store it up outside of Shabbat. So in the grumbling Yah is going to provide for them meat. Now, what is meat? Meat is the depth of the word. Um, I remember many years ago, some years ago, we were at a beginnings of a Torah teaching. I was just trying to lay a Hebraic foundation for some study. And there was about a half a dozen people seated with me at a kitchen table 10, 15 minutes into the beginnings of what I was trying to teach. Anyone has ever heard me teach in a group setting, it takes me 10 to 15 minutes just to get the introduction going. And so I'm proceeding a bit and I'm just laying a foundation and this individual starts taking their fist and pounding it on the table. What's going on? What did I say? And they start almost yelling at those that are at the table. This is meat. This is meat. And then they turn and with tears rolling down their face, they're saying, I've been starving to death. All I've been getting is milk. 
Nobody has any meat to offer, but this is meat. To one, it is starving. It doesn't take any, you know, any substantial offering. Almost any truth would be meat by comparison. But here Yah is going to give Israel meat, not only for their stomachs, but he is going to give them some substance of his word. And then there is the bread. The bread is twofold. Number one, it is a revelation or the revelation of Messiah. Yeshua said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. I am this living bread. And so there is this symbolic daily revelation of Yeshua, the daily dose of the bread, the second part then, is not only am I going to partake of him and see him as the manna, but there is this daily supply. And that is that Yeshua can show up for me on a daily basis as much as I'm willing to go and partake of him. I have to go and get it. The manna is not hand-delivered uh, with DoorDash up to the tent door. You have to go out and get it. But if we're willing to go into the field and get it from the word, it's available and it will nourish us. And Yah will give us a supernatural supply, even on Shabbat, that is going to be there for us. The test here, then, is the response of the people to that. You want to mumble and grumble and complain and throw a fit? Come here. Come near to me, and I will give you what you're lacking. But the test is going to be the long-term response of what I supplied for you. So for those that have prayed for years for revival, and when revival shows up and lives are changed and hearts are refreshed and the, the congregation grows, are you now going to complain about not being able to find a parking place or a place to sit? Someone took my seat. Someone's taken my position. Someone else is, um, is enthusiastic. Why don't these people calm down and sit down so that we can get back to normal services? Really? I thought you were praying for revival. Yah, I pray for you to work a financial miracle for me and give me an increase of income. Well, when that prayer is answered, do you know what to do with the extra income? And are you prepared to set money aside for the payment of a higher tax bracket? And are you willing to, to invest in the excess and share with the excess? No, I just wanted a fatter wallet. Really? I thought you had a purpose. So sometimes the answering of our prayers could be a bigger test than the endurance to get the answer. We'll just kind of pause and salah and maybe let that sink in there for a second. And so Israel, over a period of time, they developed this idea that they didn't like the manna that much, but they gotten tired of it. Can't imagine someone really knowing Messiah Yeshua and then growing bored and tired of him. That seems to tell me that they really weren't just looking for redemption and reconciliation and restoration. Maybe they were just looking for something better in their life and not really deliverance. Yah will give us an answer to prayer. He will fill our spiritual stomachs, but then what? Where are we going with this? I want to take a few moments here <clears throat> at the end of, of this week and say thank you to those that helped push us over the 1,000 subscriber mark. Now, for other YouTubers, this may be a small achievement. They've done it in a day or two. Um, it's taken us a number of years to get to this point. But here we are, and it's a milestone. And I want to recognize it and say thank you to everybody that has subscribed, that uh, has hit the like buttons, that has made comments, that has shared this channel with others, that has gone to Remnant of Israel. Uh, dot com and, and supported us. Thank you so much. Shabbat Shalom to everyone that you are a part of, that gathers with you, even if you're by yourself. I know that the King will be there with you. 
May your time together with him on this Shabbat be special and encouraging and enlightening. And we'll see you again next week. Until then, Shabbat Shalom. Shalom.